listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We're going to talk all things youth ministry. A number of things coming up today, and one of them is a great new book from LCMS Youth Ministry and Concordia Publishing House. We're going to share that with you in just a moment. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us in studio today, the Reverend Mark Kiesling. He's director of LCMS Youth Ministry. Mark, welcome back. Thank you. And also Juliana Schultz, fellow DCE and program manager for LCMS Youth Ministry. Welcome back. Thanks for having us. They also both serve as hosts of End Goals podcast. You can find it here on the KFUO app, KFUO website, awesome youth ministry podcast. Also joining us today, Meredith Smith. She's communications specialist for LCMS Youth Ministry. Welcome back, Meredith. Thanks for having us. Every time you guys come in, we talk about something fun like youth gathering (laughs) or conferences, ways Mm -hmm. to encourage young people, care for young people in our congregation. We're going to do that today in a number of ways, Um, one being... A new book, yes, that has been in the works for how long now? How long have you a been working while. on this? A little while. <laughs> it, took us yeah. a, it took us a minute. A minute. I'm a really slow writer. <laughs> well, it's rooted in research as well. Yes. yes. So, I mean, you have to have some time to do research. Which I know, Juliana, that's like numbers and data. That's all. That's like my favorite. Your your wheelhouse. You yes. Do, do you just like, does your joy factor go up when you start seeing <laughs> spreadsheets? Chart. Yes, charts yes. and spreadsheets. Mm-hmm. So tell us about the the research that went into preparing for this book. Because I know there was another book right before mm-hmm. this as well in youth ministry that was very helpful. Remind me of the name of that. Just, Relationships Count. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Relationships Count. Okay, so this one you take into, in, into consideration more of that research that was used for that book as well. Tell us a bit more about that research and how that led to this book. Yeah, so starting in 2016, we did a three-part research project called LCMS and the Millennials, and we looked at what it was that either retained or didn't retain young people at that point. Millennials were still in their 20s at mm-hmm. that point. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> you said 2016. It was a minute ago. It was a minute ago. <laughs> that hurts. Right? I know. And so we, what we were looking for was we talked to both congregations, and we asked them to tell us about their retention of their confirmads from you know their early 2000s to today and then qualities and things that are going on in their congregation. Then we went to young adults themselves, both the ones that had stayed in the church and those that had left. We were really blessed that we had over 2,000 respondents to that. gave us a lot of great information. Then after we had analyzed that, we said there were still some voids left for things that we wanted to know. And so we did a series of focus groups to help us kind of flesh that out. We did this with a full team. So it wasn't just Mark and I, Ryan Knut, who works for Rosters and Statistics here in the building, as well as Dr. Dave Reeder. Dave Reeder and Kevin Borchards, mm-hmm. who are both able to work with us. All five of us work together to produce Relationships Count, which is the book that ended up being kind of the information from that study. We got it out there. People read it. Well, some people, at least a few people read it. <laughs> um, it's been a minute since that one is out. Yeah, out too. it yeah. has. And we were really blessed that CPH was able to partner with us on that book as well. But people kind of came out and said, okay, that's great that all of that data says that. So what do we do with it? Mm-hmm. Like, what is that supposed to look like? What What are the suggestions you're making based off of the things? And we certainly, we made su- suggestions and relationships mm-hmm. count and, and we made some application, but people were really looking for what were the, what were the practical things that we now suggest because we had done this. And so that really became sort of the onus for us to start thinking about what it is that we would say health youth ministry should look like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we've got seven practices of healthy youth ministry. Let's talk about what that doesn't look like first? What What are some things that healthy youth ministry does not look like? Well, one of the things that we saw that was great, I mean, one, first of all, it's healthy youth ministry is God at work through his people, through his word, through his sacrament, which was exciting to hear that from young people, articulate that, see the congregations do that work. And the other thing I would say, too, that I think was great to see when we talk about, especially the context of maybe LCMS congregations is, it's not always easy, but it's not complicated. And so it's those things that we know, relationships, connections, being in the word together, doing activities together around maybe a common goal of service are things that, again, were able to connect young people to the church, where, again, they had healthy relationships, were in God's word, and those are some of the things that it was not. Not complicated and also certainly not all about us, but about what God's doing through us and for us. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And certainly something that is not done by one individual right. in your church, mm-hmm. right? Whether that's a church worker, whether that's a lay leader, it can't, it has to be a team effort. I'd say one other thing that was kind of funny when we were doing the research and the thing that obviously came out of the research with millennials was, was, was about relationships. Therefore, the book Relationships Count. And jokingly, someone, we were at a symposium doing the data and someone jokingly got up and said, so what's the program to create relationships? Uh-huh. And like, it's not a program. It's, <laughs> it's actually, actually much more around those organic relationships and an intentionality around connecting with young people. Mm-hmm. But it's not necessarily about the silver bullet program that we were hoping for it because we, wanted, oh, we, to really mar- we wanted to market that and give that to churches and that's not what came out. Uh, but yet, yeah, nonetheless, uh, that was one of the things we started too, that this is about kind of, we call it a platform is what we call that. It's not a program, but a platform to be able to talk about healthy youth ministry. Mm-hmm. So what were the things that rose to the top in the research then that you were able to identify as these, well, the, the, the seven practices mm-hmm. of All right. So we ministry. say that seven practices are that congregations have warmth, challenge, and grace, that they have supportive adults, that they have engaged parents, and they have opportunities to serve and lead. So those are sort of the people and the environmental things that we say congregations should have. And then the other part of it is that every congregation should help young people to deeply understand their baptismal faith, to live out their unique vocations, and to have a resilient identity in Christ. And so those would be the seven things that we found that are in our research, in scripture, in theology, the things, the themes that kept coming up over and over. And within that, we have lots of different sub points and ways that we flesh that out practically, but those would be the seven practices. Mm-hmm. That sounds like really, really great stuff. I'm I'm looking forward to helping implement some of this <laughs> in my own church. How can people find this book and the research and all of the awesome things that go along with it? Yeah, so the book is available now on cph.org. So that's a great place to go get the book. If you want some additional materials, we're going to be having additional materials on uh, youthesource.com. So, for example, we have short videos around each of the practices, discussion guides, and other supportive things that can go along as you're implementing it in your congregation. And if people really like the data, the relationships count is still available in ebook version through CPH as well if they like to download that in both. Mm -hmm. I think both in Apple Books and in Kindle, right? I think they get both. Mm -hmm. What I appreciated about Seven Practices is that you both included personal examples, like lots of personal stories that really demonstrate what it is that you, the the points that you're making. One of them I remember was Juliana's story talking with a a, a pastor who is like (laughs) desperate to figure out what is, what do we need to be doing? Can you, we we don't need to tell like every story from the book, but can you recap that story? Yeah. So I certainly, I was, I was sitting with a pastor. We were talking, I told him I worked for LCMS Youth Ministry and he sort of lamented. He was uh, saying like, well, we don't have youth ministry. And I was like, oh, okay. And, and then he started to say, well, we only have, you know, this, this handful of young people. And, and so I did, I did one-on-one confirmation (laughs) with them and we've got them connected to adults in the congregation. And, and those adults are helping find places for them to serve. (laughs) And, and, you know, we don't have a, a, a youth ministry Bible study. So they just come to adult Bible study and, and you, you know, they're not always consistent, but they're close and, and, and he's talking and I'm like, you are, in my head, I'm thinking you were describing healthy youth <laughs> ministry, right? Now, in in his mind, right, it had to look like youth group. It had to look like people and lock-ins and it had to uh, be pictured a certain way. And I and I and he was really shocked to hear me say it because I did say it to him. I was like, sounds like you have a very vibrant and healthy youth ministry. And that was not what he was expecting from me, I think, because he had some some notions of what he thought healthy youth ministry is supposed to look like. Uh, I think for us, one of the things we wanted this book to do is for it to not only be helpful for church workers, but lay like leaders, but helpful for people to say, like, when we talk about health youth ministry, we're not just talking about maybe the youth ministry you experienced or youth ministry as we see kind of uh, we expect to see. But like health youth ministry can look like a lot of different things in a lot of different ways with a lot of different sizes and resources. But if you're hitting these key markers, we think you can really retain your young people in the church. Yes. Not every youth ministry looks like Walther League. Thank you for the throwback to that, by the yeah, way. Yeah. Impressive. I don't think any of us in here experienced Walther League. Oh, are, I think I'm the oldest in the room. So, for that. No. And I never experienced it. All right. Well, that is uh, Seven Practices for Healthy Youth Ministry is a, a great resource for anyone who cares for young people in the church, whether it's mm-hmm. parents, pastors, DCEs, uh, adults. 
anyone in the church who cares about them. It's a great resource. Another great resource coming up this summer, which there's very little room left, yeah. is what you call National. Tell us about National, what happens at that. Absolutely. So it is a standalone youth ministry conference that we host. For us, it's the year before the LCMS Youth Gathering. So this summer, I will be down in New Orleans, uh, July 21st to the 24th. So again, we'll be focusing on the seven practices um, in our plenary sessions, and then there'll be a m- number of workshops around the practices, but also just maybe some rather maybe connection when we talk about deeply understanding baptismal faith, some of those topics that we help young people get into the word as they are seeing you know things, whether it's in their culture that they will have questions about, or just how do we <coughs> connect them into the congregation as well. So have those topics that'll take place as well. The other strong connection we make is a prep, prep, uh, preparation time for the LCMS Youth Gathering. So by and large, many of the adults who come are preparing to go to the gathering the next summer. So it's a great way to see the city, get the lay of the land, understand where the hotels are at, that type of thing. And then we have adult leader team that also does trainings around those topics too. So it's a great way to get prepared for the gathering the next summer. What are some of the benefits for the adults that will be attending? I know registration is nearly full, but what are some of those benefits for the the adults that will be going this year? Uh, We have a great chance for them to, we try and help connect them and network them to other people doing youth ministry. So there's that great camaraderie and network that can happen there. Uh, We have um, amazing breakout speakers as well as some plenary speakers. We're going to be focusing both on the seven practices and gathering, as Mark said. And so it's informational for them and also a great spot for them to be able to orientate themselves if you're going to be bringing a group to the gathering. Good to know kind of what direction everything is in, where your hotels and your restaurants are, before you bring a group of teenagers <laughs> to navigate the city. If you didn't know, New Orleans has some good food. That's, oh, that, might be, that. Yeah, that might be one benefit, too. Yeah. I've heard. Yeah. Yes. I, music, too. I'm yeah. just a little too happy about New Orleans 2025 <laughs> LCMS Youth Gathering. Gonna We're going to talk more about national and other opportunities in LCMS Youth Ministry in just a moment. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Today we're talking with our friends in LCMS Youth Ministry, the Reverend Mark Kiesling, DCE Juliana Schultz, and Meredith Smith, all about uh, things going on in LCMS Youth Ministry. We've taken a look at Seven Practices of Healthy Youth Ministry, a great new book from LCMS Youth Ministry and uh, Concordia Publishing House. We're also talking about National, which is a national conference for those who care for Mm -hmm. the young people of our church, in essence, youth leaders and those Mm -hmm. who, who serve, who are leading groups maybe to the LCMS National Youth Gathering. Do you have to be going to the gathering in order to attend yeah, it's a standalone conference that, yeah. you know there'll be workshops for a gathering but plenaries will not be about the gathering that'll be again about the seven practices and then plenty of workshops that will be on other topics mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now i understand there is also an additional benefit for a registration to national correct that's correct so if you are an adult that registers for national you get a complimentary registration to the lcms youth gathering the following summer so again that additional incentive that if you're going to come to uh, the lcms youth gathering in july of 25 national is a great time for you to come and see the city and start to really start the registration process and get that information from our staff. I know registration is is very limited at the moment, but in case there are still spots left, how do people register, find out more details, maybe plan for the next time it happens? <laughs> if you want to register to join us in New Orleans next summer, you can find registration at lcmsgathering.com slash national24. National24. Man, it's already 2024. I know, I know. I know. We're, nope, don't say it. <laughs> okay, I won't. But, no countdowns allowed. No <laughs> countdowns allowed. <laughs> All right, well, speaking of, uh, since the LCMS Youth Gathering is not that far away, I mean, it's just less but a year don't and a few it. months. That means that those who will be serving as volunteers at the gathering 
need to be making plans for that. And there are only a few days, few very small window to apply for that as well. Let's talk about Gathering Ambassadors and what they do. Yeah, our Gathering Ambassadors are formerly known as Community Life Builders or CLBs. If you've been to a gathering, you know these guys are the ones that are wearing yellow all throughout all the different gathering program areas. And right now, our application is open, but only until March 15th. So this application for Gathering Ambassadors is open for any and all adults ages 26 and up at the time of the gathering. You can be a pastor, a church worker, a lay leader, or an extra parent who just wants to go and serve young people in uh, many unique ways. We have a lot of uh, front of people uh, opportunities, but also some behind the scenes. So open to any vocation and any skills that you guys want to bring to our volunteer team. We'd be happy to have you guys in New Orleans. <laughs> There's a lot of opportunities to serve, yes. and these people are very, very important <laughs> yeah, for the gathering. What are some of the benefits to serving as a gathering ambassador? I think one of the things that ambassadors will love is that they just love to see our young people excited about their faith, be in the city, be together as God's people. It just is rejuvenating that way. I think another thing too, like when you have those people with hearts of service, the impact that these volunteers will make on the city. So like we will hear from event coordinators, like say at the stadiums or at the convention centers, they'll be like, can we bring your volunteers in for every event that we do? (laughs) Because just they do all this work with a smile on their face and the connection they bring in our event. It's one of the things that really does make the LCMS Youth Gathering unique and special in terms of events that size is the connection that comes. And it's because oftentimes those volunteers are the ones that are doing that. So again, if someone just likes to kind of have that time of being community, time of joy, it is a great opportunity to serve. And that was feedback just from the person who was directing traffic on the escalator. Right, 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 right. exactly, exactly. I mean, there's a wide variety of jobs. What are some of the, what are, what are some of the things that the ambassadors do, gathering ambassadors do? So, so we definitely say that ambassadors are very important for information sharing. So they are very well, they, they come in for a little extra training. So they kind of know just the lay of the land again and where they can point to good information. As well as we say, they are very important for our, the hospitality side of the gathering. So that welcoming face, welcoming connection, pointing people in the right direction. And then also certainly that safety side um, in terms of they, again, are just another presence in the city for adults for us at the the gathering. So they're key for that. And then I'd say the range is, like you said, kind of traffic folks that are just there giving high fives, pointing people the right direction to everything to maybe some specializing. Like we have what we call the care team, which are probably people who have either gone through maybe Stephen ministry training or might be counselors in their career vocation. And they're just another layer of care that we have for when like maybe things go on in a group or maybe things back home and you need a little extra help as an adult leader to walk or talk through a situation. We've got a team of specialized people who just come and be with your group, be a presence there, pray with you and connect you there. So they, there is a wide range from those that are just there, want to be around the youth to those that maybe have a little bit specialized, maybe training or vocational connections that will put them into those situations to serve. Does this position come with a special colored shirt? Absolutely. I think everybody is excited to know that we are going back to yellow for our gathering ambassadors. <laughs> All right. So the the applicants for this need to be, according to what Mark described, responsible adults. Yes. 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 <laughs> Applications are due on the 15th, which is only just a couple days away. Mm-hmm. What kinds of things do you ask on the application? Sure. So everything from obviously kind of just a little bit about you, home church, experience that you have either serving at the gathering or other capacities like a gathering, other maybe trainings that you have. Then we do ask questions about like maybe some like the ones I always crack up is like they'll ask, are you a night owl or are you an early bird kind of thing? Just like get your scheduling kind of in mind, like what kind of job might you have that role might be. So a little bit about yourself in that way too, just your preferences. And then we we list kind of the eight general areas where they could serve and we have them rank them around what do you think would you be best or most interested in? So we get that information. And then from there, we do then ask for a pastoral reference. And so we'll take care of that on the back end and get that reference done. If, they're, if you're a pastor yourself, we have a process for that of who you get your reference from. And so those are some of the key things that we have as part of the app. Well, I will say for ambassadors, there's a $400 fee, but then we cover travel, housing, and some meals for that. So basically you're paying for your travel with that $400 fee. And that allows us to bring in more. It helps support our young adult volunteers that will open up here later in the summer just to provide that support. So there is a fee, but then again, we're going to cover your travel either by buying your plane ticket or we'll reimburse you for miles if you drive. So that's coming up 
in a few days. Yes. A lot of a few things to gather. Yes. Some questions to answer. <laughs> but get those in soon yes. for for gathering happening next summer. You mentioned what else is on the horizon? Just to kind of give a heads up, you guys are in the preparations for gathering. What else is on the horizon soon for gathering preparations to get that get that in people's heads? We're really excited. So each each LCMS district, or most LCMS districts, I should say, have what we call a district coordinator. Those are people who support and connect the adult leaders and congregations who are coming from each district, as well as do things like our district events that take place, which is when districts come together for maybe a riverboat ride or some other things that might take place in New Orleans, as well as we have a, on the floor that we call the district zone, which is a way for uh, youth to get connected with their district and learn more about districts and the ministry that happens at that level. And so they're a group that we're going to be training here in April coming up. So bringing them together and really continuing on on that process. And so that's another really a great tool for adult leaders to connect and get prepared is that they've got some information more in context to the district. Like they might do district level transportations, so like maybe bus down together, that type of stuff. So they coordinate that as well. So that's coming up. And then, as I mentioned before, we're excited. Uh, we have uh, another group of volunteers we call young adult volunteers. That's our age 19 to 25 uh, year. That's the color orange. That's what they orange, orange, nation. orange nation. That's what they, they were at the gathering. And that application will be opening up the summer so we're ramping up for that as well very exciting all right before we go on to the next topic you brought up a really important important application question that i'm dying to know how many people in this room would be eligible the question was night owl or early riser is that right yes Mm -hmm. all right so what are you are you night owl or an early riser i'm a night owl night owl early riser early riser early riser early riser Sarah? I don't know. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> depends on the occasion. Yeah, right. It does. <laughs> the occasion. I can do either. Probably it's, early riser, though. This chapter in life, early riser. Yep. Must be night owl. I okay. fall asleep at 9 o'clock, so well, I guess that makes me an early riser. <laughs> we've talked a, a bit about youth gathering. One other great resource that can be useful in preparing for youth gathering is End Goals Podcast. Yes. What's going on with End Goals Podcast? What's coming up? And maybe some recent episodes to check out. Yeah. End Goals is a fantastic. If, if you haven't listened to it, we really try and keep it. We try and keep it short <laughs> and, and really applicable, particularly for lay leaders who are trying to get into youth ministry and want some additional training. We do interviews. So Mark and I like to say that we talk to people who are much smarter than we are mm-hmm. about youth ministry. So it's fantastic. Right now we're doing a series we're calling Starter Pack. It's our second time around on this topic, but it's really like, okay, you just got voluntold that you're the youth leader. <laughs> what are the kind of the baseline things that you need to know? Things like risk management or how do you help best utilize games in youth ministry or how do you build a team? How do you build community? So how do you communicate well? with your young people. So we're working on on that series. We're looking forward to doing a series where we're going to revisit seven practices. If you go back to old episodes, we talked about seven practices way back when we started the podcast. So we're going to talk about them again and interview some of the people who helped contribute to the book and talk about how they're using those things practically. So always new things. We thought, uh, I'm not sure we ever thought we would get 100 episodes plus in. (laughs) We still find that there's more to talk about and and help people to think about how they can care for young people well. Mm Mm-hmm. It's funny how when you start a podcast, you're like, this won't last. And then three years later, you're still going. Yeah. 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 (laughs) What are some of the other topics that you guys talk about? Who is this podcast for? Who should be listening? Yeah. So uh, really our focus is uh, certainly it can be helpful for for pastors or DCEs or deaconesses who are doing youth ministry. But really our focus is for the mom and dad, for the lay leader who just cares for young people. They're doing it on their volunteer time. They just want to make sure they're they're caring well for the young people. But maybe they don't have any particular theological training or educational training. So we want to help go into those kinds of things to topics that might help them to Um, understand what's going on in the adolescent brain or we've done a series on apologetics we've done a series on partnering well with parents we've done a series on looking at research we've done series on all sorts of different pieces of of how you might put together and think about programming in youth ministry so really you can go back most of those episodes are are fairly timeless like you can go back and listen to and we try and make them ones where you can get a lot of information in a short period of time or hear from other youth leaders both professional and lay across the country to be able to know like well how do they handle that in their youth group and how that might help like me and mine Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And some podcasts you can listen, like you can bump up the speed on those, but you can't on end goals. <laughs> Mark and I already talk at two point mm-hmm. speed. So <laughs> yeah, we get, we get very chipmunky very fast. <laughs> what has, end goals is, is well past a hundred episodes now in, in your time hosting end goals, what has been the most serious episode mm-hmm. and what has been the, Ooh. maybe the most lighthearted or funniest episode? Mm. And maybe it wasn't what the end result was, right. but yeah. maybe in recording it. Gosh. That was a tough question, wasn't it? I, serious, I'd probably say. I, I mean, two come to mind. And one is we talked about you suicide mm-hmm. um, was one that was pretty heavy. We talked about that. And then we talked about one about bullying, too, that actually went yeah. where I wasn't necessarily expecting it to go about how hard that can be in the life of a young person, especially with social media that can easily go undetected mm-hmm. and how when young people don't have a say person they can talk to about it, how they hold that and how ugly that can get. That was one that was hard. In that same yeah. series, so it's all part of the same series. Yeah. We talked to somebody about um, drug and alcohol addiction as mm-hmm. well. And I feel like those were all really mm-hmm. intense, but all really helpful mm-hmm. in how we might think about how we care about those things in our in our youth ministry. Mm-hmm. And ask good questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the silliest ones are the ones that are just you and I, yeah. right? Or just like, and mean? luckily, we can cut a lot of that seriousness out, right? I mean, um, on seriousness. We did, we did a fun episode for our, like our hundredth episode. Yeah. We let people on online ask us questions, which was which was fun. And it's it's fun. Like we know a lot of the, by virtue of our job, we know a lot of the people we're interviewing. Mm-hmm. So it's always fun to get a, a friend on the podcast and ask them to be professional and, and <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Mm-hmm. This can get a little silly, too. Hmm. I don't know what that's like. <laughs> no, yeah, Have right. some friends on the podcast and ask them to be professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Seven Practices of Healthy Youth Ministry. You can get it from cph.org. Mm-hmm. Great resource. National. You can find that at LCMS. Uh, Meredith, help me out. <laughs> LCMSgathering.com slash national24. Thank you very much. Gathering Ambassadors. Where do we find information? That's only like two days left to apply for that. LCMSgathering.com slash volunteer. All right. And end goals, of course, you can find that here on KFUO.org, the KFUO app, anywhere you get podcasts as well, end goals, podcasts. It's a great resource. Thank you so much, team, for being here today, being our guest on The Coffee Hour. It's great to catch up with you again. Great to see you. Thank you. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you, anytime, anywhere. Showing support for KFUO is now easier than ever. You can sport a KFUO shirt, swag, or even socks by visiting our online store. Go to kfuo.org slash store and order high-quality KFUO-branded merch. You no longer need to wait for our annual share for a chance to show your KFUO spirit. Visually share and wear this ministry out in the world by checking out our selection. Every purchase helps to support our proclamation of Christ for you, anytime, anywhere. Go to kfuo.org slash store.